Welcome back. In this video, we continue our study of chapter 1 and we move to section 1.3 about topology and topologically equivalent distance. If you studied carefully the previous section and did the exercises, you will observe that most of the concepts and results that we studied and we defined so far rely only on the notion of an open set. Okay. So, for example, the concept of neighborhood, interior, closed set, closure of a set, boundary, limit points, all really depends, were defined in terms of open sets. They were, there was no uh, mention of ball or uh, distance directly involved in their definition. And this, this is the point that helps us to move toward more generality. So, in general, if um, let us recall the properties of an open set first. So, we know uh, from Proposition 1.2 that the empty set and the whole space are open, according to our definition. The, an arbitrary union of open set is an open set, and an intersection of two open sets is an open set. Therefore, if we denote calligraphic T, the collection of an open of open sets, we can restate uh, proposition uh, 1.2 in the following way. So the empty set and the whole space belong to the collection of open sets. An arbitrary of elements of this collection belongs to this collection. So we say that the collection is stable under arbitrary unions. And the intersection of two elements of T belongs to T, which by induction implies that a finite intersection of elements of T belongs to T as well. So, in general, if we have a set X, a family of sets, of subsets of X, satisfying these three properties is called a topology. Okay? And the elements of the topology are called open sets by extension. Okay? So, a metric space is, so of course, a topological space is a couple or a set equipped with a special, uh, with a topology. And therefore, a metric space is a topological space, a particular kind of topological space. But of course, the converse is not true. And uh, you will study in depth uh, topological spaces next year. Okay, but it's really important to know what is a topology. And the most important thing is to understand what do we mean by two topologically equivalent distances. Okay. Okay. Let us go back to metric spaces. So this was just to give you a taste of what you will study later. I will not give, uh, as usual, examples. Okay, because. Uh, this is not part of your program, and there is a whole course devoted to it. But you, you have to understand that metric spaces are a particular class of what we call topological spaces. Okay, And a topological space, once again, is a set equipped with a special collection that satisfies these, these three properties. Okay. So one, once we have the notion of open set, or once we have the notion of a topology, we can define the concept of neighborhood, Closed set, uh, closure, interior, boundary, limit points, etc. Okay. okay, now let us go back to uh, metric topology. Uh, by definition, the, top, the topology generated or induced by D, by distance D, is by definition the collection of all open subsets of X and will denote it by calligraphic T sub D, and this notation is very useful when we have more than one distance on the same set and we want to compare them, okay? So D generates or defines a collection of special sets. And these sets satisfy the properties in Proposition 1.2. Uh, and uh, so TD, once again, is what? Is the set of all sets O satisfying the condition of openness that we defined in metric space. Okay? So this is just to refresh your memory. Okay? So this is here. We see how T depends on D via the ball. Because when we change the distance 
the ball, the concept of ball changes. Okay. And once again, by proposition 1.2, TD satisfies three things. Empty set, whole space belongs to TD. Union of elements of TD is in TD. Intersection of two elements of TD is in TD. Okay. Okay. So now let us see what happens, how TD changes when D prime changes. Okay. In general, if D changes, there's no relation between TD and TD prime. But it's possible that D and D prime are to be different, but TD equal to the TD prime. Okay. In this case, we say that D and D prime are topologically equivalent. Or we say that they generate the same topology, or they induce the same topology, as you like. Okay. So this means that this collection TD is equal to the corresponding collection TD prime. Okay. Now we'll give some examples and uh, state a methodology to prove that two the two distances are topologically equivalent in terms of balls. Okay. So the first example is recorded in a proposition. On Rn, we know that on Rn, we have three familiar norms. The norm 1, the Euclidean norm, the usual norm, and the infinity norm. Okay, And for n equal 2, we drew uh, balls, the balls with, with respect to these norms. Okay. Now, these three norms generate distances. So, Norm 1 generates a distance d1. So what does it mean? It means that d1 of xy is equal to the norm of x minus 1. d2 of xy is norm 2 of x minus 1. Okay? And d infinity is norm infinity of x minus 1. Okay. And so d1, d2, and so we have th uh, three distances now on Rn. And we claim that these three distances are topologically equivalent, which means, once again, that they that they have the same collection of open sets. Okay, not the same distance, but the same collection of open sets. Okay, why this is so? We will prove just that d2 and d infinity are equivalent, and you will prove that d1 and d infinity are equivalent, as in the exercise. Okay, so but this is the same strategy. Okay, and of course equivalence is an equivalence relation. So if so, it's, so d1 is equivalent, d is equivalent to itself. If d is equivalent to d prime, then d prime is equivalent to d and transitivity as well. Okay, so if you go back to the definition, you will see that the norm infinity of any vector x in Rn is less or equal than the Euclidean norm of x. Okay, just uh, because this is the maximum. Okay, and the maximum is less than the square root of the root, okay, so this is not uh, difficult, and the norm, the Euclidean norm of x is less or equal than the radical n, which, which is the dimension of the space, times the infinity norm of x. So this is also uh, not difficult to see, okay? <clears throat> so if you like, the norm squared is less than n, okay? Because each term is less than its maximum. So when you sum n times the maximum, we get that. Okay. Very simple. And probably you encountered this before. And now this is the key to prove topological equivalence. Therefore, when I put instead of x, x minus y, I get the d infinity distance between x and y is less or equal than d2 of x and y, which is less or equal than radical n times the d infinity distance between x and y. Okay? And it follows two things. The ball with respect to D2 of center X and radius R is contained in the corresponding ball with respect to D infinity of the same center and the same radius. How do I prove that? Very easy. I take an element here and prove that it's C. So if Y is here, what does this mean? It means that D2 of X and Y is less than R. So this is less than R. So the smaller one is less than R. So Y is here. Okay, so this inequality here implies this inclusion here. And pay attention to the reversal of the order. The bigger distance is now is corresponds to a smaller ball. Okay, so don't confuse that. Now, for the second inclusion, also, how to prove this inclusion? We take an element y here. 
if y is in this ball, this means that d infinity of x, y is less than r over radical n. So radical n times d infinity is less than r. So this guy here is less than r. And therefore, d2 is less than r. So y is here. Okay. So once again, we uh, reverse the order. And that's it. Now, how do I prove that t, td2 is equal to td infinity? Okay, so I take an op so double inclusion as well. I take an open set for the topology generated by the infinity. So otherwise stated, we take O in calligraphic td infinity. Okay, so O is open for d infinity. What does this mean? It means that if x is an O, then there exists a ball for the infinity of center x, radius r, contained in O. Now look at this inclusion. If the bigger ball is an O, then the smaller ball is an O. So BD2 is an O. Therefore, but X was arbitrary. So whenever X is an O, we found a ball of center X with respect to D2 contained in O. And this by definition, this means that O is open for D2, or otherwise stated O belongs to TD2. So this is one inclusion. TD infinity is contained in TD2. So note that we reverse twice the order. D infinity less than D2, BD2 less than, uh, contained in BD infinity, and next time TD infinity contained in TD2. So we have two reverses. And the other one is similar. If now O is uh, open for D2, take X and O, then BD, there exists a ball with respect to D2 of some radius R contained in O. So if the big, so we look at this inclusion here. If the bigger biggest ball is contained in O, then the smaller ball is contained in O. So once again, we found a ball with respect to the infinity of center X contained in O. And this precisely means that O is open for the infinity or O belongs to TD infinity. So TD2 is equal to TD infinity. And with the same proof, you can, the same arguments, you can prove that d1 and d infinity or d1 and d2 are equivalent. Okay. Okay, now let us stop a little bit to learn something, to record what we learned from this proof. Okay, so if you have two distances on the same set X, if the topology generated by D is bigger than the topology generated by uh, D prime, we say that D generates a finer or bigger topology than D prime. Okay. Okay. When does this happen? Let us go back to the definition. If this is true, or this is true if and only if what? Every set here is here. Okay. Now, if every set he O he is here is here, then the set O satisfies the condition of openness, which means that for every X in, uh, yeah, no, so here. Okay, I'll state the definition. This is true if and only if this condition holds. For every X in X, and for every positive radius R, there exists a number, a positive number delta, such that the ball with respect to D of center X and radius delta is contained uh, in the ball with respect to D prime of the same center and radius r okay so here this is if this is true then this is true and if this is true this is true as you may check okay so we have to two, two implications but this follows from the arguments that we used in the proof of the previous proposition okay so but one one, one more time uh, pay attention to the reversal of the order uh, the the distance corresponding to the bigger bigger topology will correspond to the smaller ball. Okay, so if you like, you can draw a picture here, and the arguments that we used on the previous proposition. For example, if you take, if you go back to the proof here, and <clears throat> we take n equal to just for simplicity, the norm, the ball for d infinity is just a square. And this is the, uh, and the ball for D2 is just a disk. So this means that every disk, every uh, square of center X contains a disk of center X. And every disk of center X contains a square. So 
this is maybe useful to understand the significance of this. Okay, so a square contains a ball or a disc, and the disc contains a square. Okay, that's it. So here we have something similar. Okay, but so try to so take a paper and a pen and prove that this implies this and this implies this. Okay, therefore TD equals TD prime if two condition holds, two conditions hold. Okay. For every x and x, or if you like, every ball of center x with respect to d prime and radius r contains a ball with respect to d of the same center, so the same the this is the same center, but the radius is different, and vice versa. So this delta need not be equal to this delta. So this is how we prove that two distances are topologically equivalent. That any ball with respect to the first one contains a ball for the second one with the same center and vice versa. Now, there is a um, convenient case where d prime is less than a constant times d. If this is true, then the first condition here holds. So we can take delta equal r over k very easily. How do I, suppose that this is true. How do I prove this? We take y here, then dxy is less than delta, which is less than r over k. Okay? So k delta is less than r. Therefore, d prime is less than r. So y is here. Okay? This is what we used in the previous proof. Okay? But this does not always happen. This is something really stronger than this. This condition, d prime less than a constant times d, is much stronger than this condition here. Okay? And it's called, okay, I will give it a name now. But this is an implication here because we have two reversal as we observed in the previous proof. If d prime is less than a constant times d, then t d prime is contained in t d. And here it's the same order. Why? Because you reverse it twice. Okay. But it's perfectly possible that the converse, so the converse is not true. Because it's possible to have t d prime contained in t d, but we don't have this relation. Okay, and only I will give an example. Okay, so this strict, this bigger condition has a name, actually. So uh, another notion of equivalence. If there is a constant two, so if there is a constant alpha such that alpha d is less than d prime, and there is a constant beta such that d prime is less than beta d, then we say that the two distances are Lipschitz equivalent, and this was the case with the infinity and two distances on Rn, okay? We had something uh, stronger than just uh, topological equivalence, okay? It's Lipschitz equivalence, okay? So, of course, Lipschitz equivalence implies topological equivalence, okay? This was the case of the previous proposition, but now we'll prove that the converse is not true, okay? So, this is really a particular, it's a good case to have, but we don't always have it. Okay, so and please one more time pay attention to the reversal of the order. It's a little bit could be confusing, but you can watch this video several times. Okay, so the last example whenever we have a metric space xd, if we set rho of xy to be, to be the minimum between 1 and d, and we know that this is a distance, as you proved that in the example, then actually rho and d are topologically equivalent. Okay. So we have to prove two things here. So TD contained in T rho, T rho contained in TD. Okay. So <clears throat> first thing, rho is either 1 or D. It's the minimum between 1 and D. And the minimum is less than 1 and less than D, so it's less than D. So rho is less than D, and this is a very good case. You can take K equal 1 here. So we directly conclude that T rho is contained in TD. Okay? Or if you like, D generates a finer or bigger topology than that of rho. Okay, so this is half of the problem done. Now, it's the reverse inclusion. Uh, the reverse inequality is not true. We cannot find a constant such that D less than k rho. I will tell you why. Now. So I have to go back to the methodology. So pick x, an arbitrary x in the space, and the positive number. Okay, and take delta to be the smaller between one and r. So of course it's something positive. Then 
we claim that the ball with respect to rho of center x and radius delta is contained in the ball with respect to d of center x and radius r. How do I prove that? We take an element here, we prove that it's here. So take an element y in the smaller ball. Then, by definition, its distance with respect to rho, the center is less than delta. And since <clears throat> delta is less or equal than 1 because it's the minimum, then we conclude that rho is precisely equal to d. Okay, <clears throat> because uh, if rho was not equal to d, then rho is equal to 1, okay, but it's strictly less than 1. So necessarily, rho of xy equal to dxy. <clears throat> but dxy, therefore, dxy is less than rho, because, than delta, because rho is less than delta. And since delta is less or equal than r, then d of xy is less strictly than r. So y is in the second ball. Okay, this is why I chose the minimum, because I need both. I need delta to be less than 1, and I need it to be less than rho, or equal. And so according to our methodology, we have uh, td is contained in t rho. Okay, so we have double inclusion and therefore equality. Okay, and now... Observe that by definition, rho is always less or equal than 1. So it's we say that it's bounded. Okay, So the diameter of x with respect to rho is at most 1. So this result is interesting because it's saying that we can always replace a distance by a topologically equivalent distance which is bounded, Okay, even if d was not bounded. And now to prove that, so this is an example where we have two topologically equivalent distances, but not Lipschitz equivalent. Yeah, this is illustrates that the converse is not true. So if you take just x equal r, which is the usual distance, then we know that rho is less than d, but we cannot find a constant k such that d is less than k rho, because otherwise we'll get the absolute value of x minus y less than k rho, which is less than 1. But there's no constant k which is bigger than all uh, such that x minus y is less than k, because r is unbounded. Okay, so if you take x very small and y very large, the distance can be made bigger, be made bigger than k. So, so therefore, uh, d and rho are not Lipschitz equivalent, but they are, however, topologically equivalent. Okay, so this concludes this video that I understand could be difficult for you. So, uh, read the notes and watch it two times or three times until you understand it. And it's very important to draw figures because they help you will help you understand better what's happening. A ball inside the ball and so. Okay. So thank you for your attention and see you next time in the exercises.